Hello there and welcome to Fair Play, the video series about factor analysis of information risk. I'm Stephen Cardinal. If you've been following along with my Introduction to Fair series, you've already learned many of the terms used in Fair and seen the Fair model broken out over loss event frequency and loss magnitude. You might be itching to try using it in an actual analysis, but before you do, there's this concept of calibration that's important to understand. A Fair analysis requires all those involved to make estimates likelihood of certain scenarios occurring, and likely financial impacts that could result. These are all forecasts, educated guesses based on historical data, subject matter expertise, and other experiences. The future is always uncertain, and that needs to be represented in any analysis. Science, however, shows that we're not always good at making estimates. Some people are far more confident in their forecasts than they should be, and others have far less faith in their own capabilities we can improve our ability to make estimates through the use of calibration exercises. But it's at this point that I highly encourage you to refer to the Hubbard and Searson book on how to measure anything in cybersecurity risk, as they give a much more thorough treatment than I can give in a short video. Our goal through calibration is to be able to develop estimates with which we have 90% confidence in their accuracy. That is, we are 90% confident that the right answer is within the range we identify. There's a 5% chance the right answer is below the lowest number we've proposed, and a 5% chance the right answer is higher than the highest number we've proposed. Well, how do we get there? Start with an absurd range. It's very easy for analysts to fall into the trap of just saying, I don't know, and ask an estimate, because they overestimate the degree of precision necessary. So if I ask you how many jelly beans are in the jar, I want you to avoid saying, I don't know. So I'll start with an absurd number, such as between 0 and 10 million. That breaks the ice and we can start narrowing it down. Next, we decompose the problem. Well, how big is the jar? How big is a jelly bean? Maybe we can use some geometry to get a rough idea of the volume of the jar. This starts getting us much closer. Now, we want to test our confidence in the estimates that we hit a 90% confidence mark. If we're 100% confident, our range is likely too large to make the best decisions. Getting to the 90% confidence range relies on some mental trickery. If we're presented with a loss scenario, we can use an equivalent bet scenario, as research shows even pretending to bet money on a situation improves our ability to assess odds. All right, so how does this work? Let's say I have a bag with 10 marbles, 9 red and 1 blue. If you draw a red marble from the bag, you win $1,000. That means you have a 90% chance of winning. When you make an estimate in FAIR, if the right answer is within your estimate, you win $1,000. So given that situation, would you choose the marble from the bag scenario, or would you choose your FAIR estimate scenario? If you choose the marble, that means you have less than 90% confidence in your range. Expand your estimated range and try again. If you choose your range, that means you have greater than 90% confidence in your estimate. Narrow your range, try again. Once you reach the point where you can't decide between the marble or your range, you have 90% confidence. Easy, right? Well, there are a lot of exercises you can find online that will help you calibrate yourself. Trivia questions such as, when was the Magna Carta signed? Maybe you know the answer and can answer with 100% confidence. Maybe you don't, so you answer with a range between 1066 and 1492. You answer a whole host of questions indicating not just your answer, but how confident you feel in your answer. A true-false question, for instance, will have between 50 and 100% confidence, while an open response question will run the gamut from 0 to 100. Afterward, you compare the number you got right with your confidence levels. Your goal is to become better at estimating to within 90% confidence, not to get a bunch of trivia questions right. All right there's one last step in the calibration process challenging assumptions. Asking a member of the SOC team about event frequency can go a long way to building a loss event frequency, but that analyst may have a limited view of the organization. Speaking with multiple analysts can help uncover assumptions and lead to a better estimate. Sometimes your, your analysts may disagree on the estimates and you'll need to either bring them together to challenge each other's assumptions, or maybe you'll even need to run the scenario twice through the FAIR model and see if there's any significant difference in the final analysis. 
definitely spend some time calibrating yourself and those who will be involved in the analysis. This is super important if you want to have an analysis that can drive quality decision making. Estimating risk is something that can be learned beyond the thumb in the wind guesses you may have used with qualitative risk analysis. And the calibration process can actually be rather fun. All right, next we'll run through the actual risk analysis process as defined in the FAIR standard. See you soon.